Alrighty, welcome back to some more video coaching. I definitely did not get to everybody in the last video. I've got a reasonably unmanageable amount of videos come in, so I've decided what I'm gonna do is a lottery system. If you want some free video coaching, submit a Dropbox link to your skiing in the comments below, and for the next video, I'll randomly pick a few and we'll use that. And I think from here on in, on each video, Submit your Dropbox links below, and I guess the more videos you put the links on, the better chance you've got of me picking you in the end. But yeah, I did seem to get an amount of videos which is slightly unmanageable, but we'll stick at it and see how we go. I'm definitely keen to keep doing these. Um, I might do another big run this week and put out a few. So, first up, we have Keith. Let's have a look at Keith skiing, hey? Alrighty, so with Keith skiing, um, it's quite good really. This is very nice skiing. Um, pretty happy with his gait. I don't see any real issues into one, two, and three. Um, however, I do notice that into one, two, and three, he's got what we're calling, what we generally call a double pump. Um, and it's very common on goods. They do sort of require quite a bit to get them to rotate. They ride pretty high in the water. They've got quite a wide forebody. So there's a lot of energy involved in getting it to start the rotation and what you often see on skiers riding goods is they'll sort of do an edge change they'll settle in on that edge change they'll sort of rise up a bit and then they'll drop down and rotate the ski and that's what we call a double pump and you really can see this in keep skiing into one two and three now into four where he makes a mistake and ends up in the water, you'll actually notice that there is no double pump. He rolls off the edge change, stays quite smooth. He doesn't dump his speed into the edge change itself. And then as a consequence of those things, he doesn't sort of rise up and drop back in through the turn. So it all looks really good, except for Keith, as he begins the turn, I feel like he's somewhat aware of the fact that it's not beginning where he wants it to happen. It's sort of taking a bit longer to begin that rotation. So then he sort of pushes on his legs in order to force that rotation. And then that sort of buries him into the water, gives him too much angle and it's all over from there. The reason <clears throat> that Keith found the ski wasn't rotating enough or as early as what he's used to is because when you do the double pump, you come off that second wake, you dump a lot of energy through the edge change and also dumps speed, but Keith doesn't have a huge issue with speed, so we'll ignore that for now. But when he's dumped all that energy, it then causes him to stand back up, which in itself isn't having a huge consequence on his skiing, but what it is doing is when he does start the turn, he's a little more upright than what he needs to be. So when he starts his rotation, he's actually also beginning to lean down into the water and increase that angle relative to the water. And so, not only does he have rotational forces happening, but he's actually sort of increasing that lean he's got relative to the water. So that's actually helping him begin his turn. And when he came into four ball here, where he hadn't done the double pump, he then didn't have that extra energy of sort of leaning his body down into the water to help begin his turn. And as a consequence, he found that the turn didn't quite happen early or fast enough. Um, so Keith, one option is for you to just really commit to this double pump. Um, you were a tad later into four, which is certainly why we didn't see that big double pump from you. But skiers that do do the double pump, they will manage to do it regardless of how late they are. They'll just learn that you sort of roll through the edge change up and down nice and quick. Because I mean, regardless of how late you are, you're still doing an edge change and the double pump does happen at the end of the edge change and there is always enough time to sort of dump that speed, rise up and rock back down. It would be nice to sort of tell you don't worry about the double pump. Um, it is extra movement. It does make things a bit difficult to get rid of the double pump. I'd probably have you hold the handle a bit longer, keep it a bit closer. But to be honest, on a good, they really do work quite well with the double pump. I've tested goods in the past. Um, I don't particularly, they don't match my style. I definitely wouldn't ride one long term. Um, but in order for me to get a good working well, I double pump them. I roll through the edge change, drop them in, rise up, and then rock down through it. Because if I come in smooth, keep the handle close, and then 
just sort of begin my rotation, I find along with a lot of other people that ride goods that it just doesn't start where you want it to and you end up having to overcommit, which gives basically the same issues we're seeing here from Keith. So Keith, mate, just commit to the double pump, lock in hard, roll through that second wake, keep all your energy loaded. When you do that edge change, just allow it to happen quite fast and then use that edge change to sort of put that ski nice and deep in the water, rise up a touch and then rotate down through the buoy. And if you do that and learn to commit to that and learn to adjust the timing of that double pump, I think we'll be able to get you, um, yeah, running quite a few buoys because the way your ski looks pretty good. It was a shame to see you go down at four ball. So good luck, Keith, hope it helps, mate. Alrighty, next up is Terry. Pretty nice lake he's skiing on here. I hope one of these houses is his. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, all right, so Terry, mate, it's your edge change that's killing you, okay? It's quite obvious that you're controlling your speed by adjusting the location of your edge change, um, and that obviously will work. You can stop cutting earlier and that will make you slower at the buoy. I would much prefer you to learn to control your speed via the aggressiveness that you use to initiate your turn. Next time you're out skiing, try and hold um, until the exact same spot each time. And that spot varies between skiers. Based on what I'm seeing here, I'd like that spot to be just on the second wake, you may not have to really, especially because you're with an outboard, the wake's quite narrow, you may not really have to load through and off into the clean water past that second wake. I think just on that second wake will be a good spot. And when you get to that second wake, after having committed to holding your load until that point, I'm then okay with beginning to see you start your edge change on top of that second wake. I think. If we can have you begin your edge change on top of that second wake each time, yes, you will then not have very good control over your speed coming into the buoy, um, but that's just the way we play the game. You do not control your speed by giving up direction. The direction is by far the most important point. If you slow down but end up steering straight at the buoy, that's a massive turn which you're then required to do. You're much better off holding that load until the second wake. Yeah, you may be a little faster than what you want to be, but when you come off that second wake, you'll go out wider of the buoy and you can bleed that speed quite easily by just sort of beginning your turn before getting to the buoy. And if you've held nice off that second wake, not only will you be um, going faster but you'll be wider and that will allow you to start that turn early which will bleed your speed you'll finish your turn at the ball and all this should start to link together but there will be some consequences of having you control your speed without changing the location of your edge change because at the moment the location of your edge change is a huge variable and if we get that to always happen on the second wake there will be issues that arise but just stick with it I want you to really commit to loading until that second wake and then we're going to attempt to deal with the consequences by controlling where and how aggressive you start your turn obviously the goal is to just start that turn as early as you can without turning inside the buoy and if you find that you're doing a good job of holding until the second wake and not um, changing the location of your edge change, because I think you will be capable of doing that, if you have that sort of dialed in, which may take some time, and then you're finding that you've got so much speed and you just can't quite rotate close to the back of the buoy, do some passes where you go out, hold till the second wake, do your edge change, and then intentionally turn in front of the buoy. Because if you can't intentionally rotate too early, learning to rotate on time will be very difficult. And I think a very good training drill for someone with issues like this will be to 
load until the second wake each time, roll through that edge change and turn in front of the buoy. It'll just get you used to really controlling where and when the start of that turn is happening. Good luck. Um, decent skiing, your legs are a bit stiff. I'm not too worried about that. You can keep most of the things you're doing the same and some of these loading phases that you're doing are excellent. We just gotta get them loading to the same spot each time and you'll find a huge amount of consistency and um, hopefully you'll be able to shorten the rope up a bit. Good luck, Terry mate, good luck. May have called Terry Keith a few times in that, not sure. Anyway, good luck Terry. Alrighty, here we have Liam. So, I feel like free skiers either go generally in one of two directions. They either have good turns and bad cuts or they have awesome cuts and bad turns. Back in the day when I was a free skier, I had very good cuts and terrible turns. And maybe coincidentally, I would argue that even as a professional water skier, that has held true. My cutting and edge changes are generally slightly better than my ability to rotate the ski itself. Um, so anyway, what I'm getting at here is Liam, mate, these turns are much, much better than your weight crossings, okay? We gotta even this up a bit. So, first of all, congratulations on pretty decent turns. Looks nice, you're falling in a bit on some of them, but I'm not too worried about that. You manage it very well. Um, these cuts, I want them to be way harder. I want you to take more load through your shoulders, so sort of close your body off a little bit, point your belly button where you wanna go. You're very square to the boat, it's folding you at the hips. Um, there's a big debate on whether you should be square to the boat, but I think most elite skiers would agree that the position you're in is far too much on the square to the boat spectrum. So let's get you closed off. It should put a bit more load through what we call the back arm, which is the arm closest to the water, the one you wanna drop into the wakes if you manage to hold and load hard enough to do that. Um, I do remember Aaron Larkins telling me a story one day that when he was learning to ski, his coach used to tell him to look over his um, back arm, like over his shoulder, and spot water down behind him. Probably wouldn't recommend that, but you're welcome to give it a crack. I'm sure it'll get you loading a fair bit harder. And old Aaron Larkins was ranked world number one at one stage, won a Moomba, I think. Yeah, he did, he won a Moomba. So um, it's definitely not the worst tip, but I um, will not go on record recommending that. Um, so Liam, mate, to get you better at these cuts, I think just as a bit of a drill, we should ignore the turns. I'd like to see you come along, cut out like you're doing a gate cut out, cut out very wide, go very high on the boat, stand there in a glide like you're about to turn in for the gates, even though you're gonna be much wider than we'd ever have you in the slalom course. Turn in nice and slow, two hands on the handle, don't do anything crazy, and then just from the widest point you can, cut across those wakes as hard and as fast as you possibly can. Just stay loaded, cut through both wakes, then keep on cutting, and do not worry about the next turn. Once you get out that next side, just stand up, keep two hands on the handle, you'll ride really high on the boat. Hopefully you've ridden the line well enough to not just come to the inside and get slack, and you sort of ride that line up on the side of the boat, Keep two hands on, keep your ski flat, wait for the speed to drop, and when you feel the speed drop, just turn in and do it again, and just do these really massive, long, aggressive cuts, followed by standing out on the side of the boat with two hands on and gliding along with a flat ski until you lose speed and then repeat it again. And I think that will get you a huge amount of practice across those wakes with huge amounts of speed, not having to worry about the turns. And um, yeah, you look reasonably athletic. I do feel like with that drill, you'll figure a lot of this out. But um, our goal is just to get you leaning away from the boat more um, and a little bit more closed off to the boat. Um, yeah, mate, it looks, looks pretty good. You, um, you got quite a good balance here, to be honest. All things considered. Alrighty, good luck with that, Liam. Hope it helps, mate. Alrighty, next up we have Bridger. Bridger knows what it's all about. He's got a zoomed in lens here. Old mate Liam had a wide angle GoPro. Wide angle GoPro makes 10.25 look like 15 off. 
1025 is 41 off. I gotta stop this bloody swapping between metric and imperial, don't I? I do try to stay imperial if I can help it. Um, just as a thank you to America for giving me my career. Um, all right, Bridger. Oh, good stack there. I rate that. I feel like with Bridger, um, it's a bit all over the place. He's probably a bit of a beginner. Um, he'll feel pretty bad if he's not, and I've said that, but um, he looks pretty strong. He's just a bit unstable. I'm not too worried about most of the things I'm seeing here. Um, Bridger, mate, you're playing with the pressure on your feet far too much. I know at an elite level, we do talk about weight distribution changing into the buoy and out of the turn, but I think um, with where you're at at the moment, um, I just want even weight on both feet. You're definitely playing with that weight distribution too much. And whether this is um, intentional or just sort of something that's happening, it looks to me like you're playing with that weight distribution to control your speed when you're about to turn in. Often you sort of probably feel fast, go to the back foot to slow down. So my tip for you would be, so you've come off that second wake, you're gliding up, getting ready for your turn, but you feel a bit fast, which I feel like is what's happening here. And then to fix that, you're going to the back of the ski. I would argue that we're gonna get far better skiing out of you if you do exactly the same thing, roll off that second wake, come up into when you're ready to turn, and at the moment that you feel fast and where we're seeing you at the moment rock to the back foot to slow down, don't worry about rocking to the back foot. Try and keep your weight really even, but just delay the turn. If you hang out there longer and you travel further down the lake, you will lose speed, the rope will go tight, and you will be able to turn in. At the moment, I just feel like you don't have any ability to delay the turn. You're rolling off that second wake. The moment you sort of reach that apex, you're sort of turning in immediately. And you've got quite a good awareness of where that apex is, which is nice to see, but where you're at with your skiing, mate, I reckon if we can get, if we can have you learn the ability to sort of hang out there off that second wake for a little bit longer until things line up, until the boat travels a bit further away from you and the rope goes tight, I think we're gonna get much more consistent flow out of your skiing and, um, Mate, I know you're probably taking a few stacks because you're pretty strong and a little unbalanced, but if we get you balanced with both feet and give you the ability to delay that turn, some of that grunt that you've got might actually come in handy. Whereas at the moment, we're not quite getting enough rhythm in your skiing for any of that grunt that you've got to actually help, even though it does give some pretty good stacks. Um, so good luck with that, mate, hope it helps. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky one to work out, but yeah, just don't be in a hurry to start that turn. If you don't feel ready, stay even on both feet and rotate in when you feel the rope get tight. Alrighty, um, good luck with that, Bridger. Okay, this will be the last one, I reckon. So if you want me to coach you, get those videos in the comments below as a Dropbox link and I will have a look at it. This is Adam. Awesome ski site, um, very nicely color coordinated. Actually, he's kind of not, I'll probably get chipped for that. Um, different types of blue. Anyway, I'm losing track here. So, old mate Adam is pretty much doing the opposite of Keith, okay? So, when you see Adam do his edge change, um, he's nowhere near um, dropping in and rising back up and then dropping back down like Keith was, okay? What Adam's doing is controlling the handle really well and rolling through the edge change quite slow. And I would argue that Adam's edge change never really finishes until he starts that rotation. He kind of rolls through the edge change, his body comes over, then he slowly just keeps it going his body leans even more over, and then all of a sudden it's time to turn. Um, we saw Keith sort of do his edge change all at once, stand back up and then drop back down for the turn. Um, just for comparison, not all elite skiers do this, but the way that I ski um, is I roll through the edge change 
pick the lean that my body needs relative to the water in order to do the turn and then I maintain that same amount of lean all the way into the ball, around the ball and then exiting the ball and across the wake. So for me, I'm only really changing, attempting to change the angle of my body relative to the water once and that's through the edge change which happens basically from sort of center line to white water off the second wake. So for Adam, given that he's quite a smooth skier, unlike what we sort of taught Keith, I'd like Adam to try and attempt to ski a little bit more like myself. So Adam, mate, first up, we're gonna need you to really commit to having a definitive start and end to your edge change. At the moment, you're sort of very progressively beginning your edge change and I would argue that often it even begins before the first wake. You've sort of started that process of letting your body come up. Um, and the edge change doesn't, like I mentioned, really finish until you actually start to rotate. So, um, Adam, you may have to do this on longer lines. I notice you're running quite a clean 13 here. I would, 13 is 32 off. I would argue that this should be learnt um, at 28 off. 28 off, I mean, I know I've mentioned this before, but 28 off is an awesome line length. Um, when I run a 28 off, it still feels very similar to what I'm doing at 41 off. Whereas if I was to run a 22 off or a 15 off, it very much feels like a different sport. There's a lot of zigzagging and very little swing. So Adam, mate, on 28 off, I would like you to really commit to loading a little bit longer. Um, doesn't have to be a whole lot longer, but I definitely don't want to see you begin your edge change into the first wake. I would like to see you really committed to maintaining the angle of your body relative to the water until the center line, okay? And then when you get to that center line, okay, instead of allowing your whole body to come up to begin that edge change. Once you're at that center line, I'd like to see you just soften your legs, okay? Maintain the lean of your upper body away from the boat and soften those legs. And what it will do is it'll suck your legs up into your body a little bit. You'll get to keep cutting for a bit longer. You won't yet lose speed, even though you've sort of sucked those legs up and reduced pressure. And then when they come up, they'll then want to roll under your body and I want you to let them roll under your body. It'll give you quite a fast edge change. I don't really want you to sort of drop in hard after you've finished that edge change like Keith does, but I don't think you're very at risk of that given how smooth you're currently doing your edge change. So you suck those knees up, you roll through nice and slow, but very fast, um, nice and fast, but very smooth, sorry. And then after you've done that, I want you to really intentionally set quite a lot of lean relative to the water way before you get to the buoy, okay? Our goal is just to take you from cutting away from the boat, okay, with say, I don't know, 45 degrees lean angle relative to the water. Let's have a look at what you're doing. Yeah, I would say 45 is probably about accurate. Um, and then I want you to just immediately transition to 45 degrees lean angle, lean angle relative to the water on the opposite edge. And I want that to happen by softening your legs. And I want the zone in which that happens to be from center line to basically the end of the white water. I can give you a little bit longer, maybe a meter past the white water if you like, but don't drag it out all the way into the buoy, okay? What this will do is it will set you on that inside edge, okay? If you let go of the handle too early, you're gonna have issues here, but hopefully you've done all of that process with your softening knees, doing a faster edge change without letting go of the handle, and you'll be set on that inside edge with the lean that you need to do your turn and to cut back across the wakes going the other way. And then you'll just be able to sort of feed the handle out. You won't need to increase that lean, and then you'll have a huge amount of control over where and when you start that rotation because the rotation will then purely be a rotation. It won't be dictated by where you happen to finish that big, long, slow edge change because at the moment, you're having to control a huge movement in order to get your rotation at the right spot. And that huge movement is obviously your whole body coming up and over. I want the edge change, which is quite a difficult part of the process to happen very quick and then you'll lean to be already set. And when you're coming into the buoy, 
everything's going to be under control and it'll be completely up to you to rotate your body where and when you need to. And when we're talking about the shorter lines, giving you that control over where, when, and how fast you're going to start and finish that rotation, or not so much finish, but more just start that rotation, is gonna have a huge impact. Because I mean, as I'm sure you're aware, once you're shortening past 32 into 35 and beyond, the swing arc of the handle really does throw you into the buoy. And I would imagine once you go shorter, Adam, you're probably just soaring past the buoy. So, mate, there's a bit in that. Hopefully it all makes sense and um, good luck with it. But yeah, once you're talking about trying to run beyond 32 off, things do get complicated. And it is always a very good thing to have quite a large error in your scheme, which is what I feel like you do have here, because it means that your potential to run shorter line lengths in the future is quite promising, to be honest. So um, good luck, Adam. I reckon we might see some 35s out of you if you haven't already ran some. Um, but yeah, this is this is quite good here. Quite good. Alrighty, that will do for today. If you want me to coach you, put a Dropbox link to your video of you skiing in the comments below. And the next video, which I might even do tomorrow, I will pick a few and give you some free coaching. Alrighty crew, catch us later and good luck out there.